Hey, Bulls and Bears, back with another dose of economic reality. We've got a lot of news to get into, but first, vehicle prices have plunged, and the type of vehicle that's plunged the most is SUVs. Let's take a look at the numbers right now. SUVs, such as this Honda Pilot that we're looking at right here, took the biggest drop. Let's take a look at the numbers here. And actually, I drive one of these, and uh, they're not bad. They're not gas guzzlers. It's about 18 miles in the city, 18 miles per gallon, 20, I think, 6 on the freeway. Used vehicle prices in the U.S. increased from November to December, but year over year, we're down almost 15% according to the Mannheim Used Vehicle Index. Now, many of you are probably saying, well, they don't look like they're that much cheaper. Yes, that's because dealers are refusing to lower prices. They may lower them somewhat, but they're very um, strict on getting out of the vehicle what they paid for. And remember, a lot of these bought back closer to the beginning of the year and the end of last year, um, well, going back to 2022, rather, and they are trying to get out of the vehicle what they paid for it. So time will tell if they're going to be making a wise decision, or if they should have just cut the price to get rid of this inventory before a pile of inventory comes onto the market because of all the vehicles that are going to be repossessed and because of the uh, the buyers being priced out because prices are too high, interest rates are too high combined, and all the, the job losses and layoffs that are going to accelerate here as we go into 2023. And that's going to make the pool of buyers dry up more quickly than it already is so i think the dealers need to cut prices now instead of holding out for people to get more money because people are not going to get more money um the banks may loosen the lending guidelines and try to get more people into these loans more subprime loans but they've already been loaning out way more money than they really should so i don't really see that happening now 15 percent for all types of vehicles the biggest one though is suvs and I've got it here for you. SUVs among the vehicles posting the biggest annual price declines, falling 16.6%, while midsize cars were down 15.8%, luxury cars down 15.2%. So yes, the bigger vehicles, uh, they use a lot more gas. And uh, even though gas prices have come down, prices are still pretty high for gas. So people are shying away from these SUVs. And uh, considering the cost of rent and housing, I think a lot of people bought SUVs in 2020, 2021, so they could sleep in. There's a lot of people that sleep in their cars, and we have a whole uh, parking lot here in San Diego where people, um, they had to make it legal. They had to legalize uh, parking in your vehicle overnight because certain parking lots didn't allow it. Certain businesses didn't want people sleeping in their parking lot overnight. So they had to designate a, uh, an entire parking lot for people that basically live out of their vehicles. Uh, but definitely, I think 2023 will be the year where these dealers are going to have to cut their prices. Otherwise, their inventory is going to start stacking up and stacking up and stacking up. Now, I've been watching a couple of local dealers. I've been looking online at every, every week, every other week at their inventory, and I'm really not seeing a spike yet in inventory. So I don't think we've hit really the noticeable uh, uptick yet in these cars coming into the lots, into the dealers. But as soon as auctions see a big inflow of vehicles because of all the um, repossessed vehicles, that's when you're going to see the prices really start going down because more vehicles equals uh, more to choose from. And when the pool of buyers is smaller, then prices have to come down. All right, on to some other news. More than two-thirds of Americans felt that their financial situation did not improve or stayed the same in 2022. So all the money that was spent, all the uh, programs that tried to help people, all the uh, money created, all the new debt issuance, all the, um, all the spending, uh, really people did not end up better than they were at the beginning of the year. And uh, so who did get richer? Uh, who gained more wealth? Well, the top 10%, folks. I think you know this. I know this. We all know this by now. Uh, this is the way the game is played. So you have to be really, really careful um, to be one of the people that actually gains wealth and, and does better during these economic times. And the way we can do that, spend less, uh, save more if you can, try to make wise decisions, try not to spend money on things you don't need to spend it on, um, and uh, keep your credit score good. Try to have a down payment that way when a buying opportunity comes down the road for a nicer vehicle, uh, a bigger and better home maybe. Um, you'll be in a much better position to benefit from the price declines that we're going to see. Now, it's going to be difficult because the cost of living is still going up 
in most other areas. And uh, food is just one example. A huge surge in uh, egg prices here over the past couple months, but it's already been going up. Egg prices and pretty much everything else has been going up over the last couple years now. Uh, but as I said before in, in previous videos, most people are barely treading water and staying the same or getting deeper in debt every month. Now, also, some of you are asking how I was doing. Well, thank you very much for thinking about me. I'm actually doing just fine. We had some storms here in California. Let me move myself out of the way here. This is a shot. I'm not sure if it's Pacific Beach or Mission Beach. It's kind of hard to tell with all the waves. It just looks a lot different. Uh, this is what's happening on the coast of a lot of California, a lot of flooding and uh, just a lot of high winds causing the waves to be unusually high. Um, I'm very, very far inland. I'm about 12 to 13 miles inland off the coast. So we saw a lot of rain, some winds, but nothing major here inland. It's mostly the coastal people that are getting nailed uh, with this, uh, with the storm, the high winds and the waves. Um, I actually wouldn't want to have any coastal property. I mean, it would actually be a good investment if you can rent it out. Um, but just, I wouldn't want to live there because the traffic's always just outrageous when you, uh, try to just go and to and from the beach areas. Could you imagine trying to commute every day out of that area that's so congested because the beaches are pretty popular, you know, here in San Diego, I couldn't imagine fighting that traffic every day. Um, I happen to work at home, which is nice, but just in general, I wouldn't want to live there. I like living a little bit inland off the coast. It's not as crowded. It's not as crazy and the traffic isn't as bad. Uh, but yeah, no floods for me, just a lot of rain and a little bit of cold temperatures. No big deal. Uh, I say cold, but actually I'm from Michigan. So when I say cold, it's definitely not cold to most people. There's been nights where we get in the 30s and the 40 uh, degree range. We'll wake up in the morning. It's maybe the upper 40s, low 50s. Uh, it's about as cold as it gets, though, here uh, throughout the winter. But remember, I'm from Michigan. I know all about shoveling snow, scraping ice off the windows. Uh, starting the car like 10 minutes or 15 minutes before you have to leave to try to get it warmed up so you're not freezing and sitting in the seat. Now let's jump into this here, some cost of living news. Right here on this channel, I warned everyone that the cost of eggs was going to surge higher. And how do we know that? Well, a lot of the farms are not doing so good right now. We also had several outbreaks of uh, disease on the chicken farms. And there were farms that had to get rid of millions of chickens. It was pretty sad. To have to report that but we all knew that that was going to equal much higher prices now we're seeing in some cases seven dollars for a dozen of eggs here in california and that's because in a lot of stores the lower cost eggs are wiped out i was at walmart all the low cost eggs gone uh, sprouts all the low cost eggs gone grocery outlet all the low cost eggs gone from those stores so it's beginning to look like that the new millionaires are going to be the chicken farmers. Um, don't you wish you had a bunch of chickens and hens and you could um, go out and get your own eggs and not have to worry about this? Well, it's a nice thing. And that's what I am going to be striving to do here in the next few years is moving to a place with more land uh, without neighbors being so close so I can do more of the homesteading type of thing. So that's one of the reasons why I keep a close eye on the market, uh, the housing market as well. And uh, I've got some skin in the game. And I think a lot of you maybe are in a similar thought pattern than myself, uh, looking to get a little more space, a little more open land, maybe a few acres to, um, you know, do what you need to do to survive homesteading, grow your own food. It's going to be a big part of, uh, I think, navigating what's ahead of us here in this economy with all these um, outrageous prices and the rising costs wherever you look. Uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on the news here for you for the economy, the stock market, cost of living, um, the monetary system, cost of automobiles. Uh, you name it, we're going to talk about it here. So please come back for more news and updates. We're going to wrap this one up for now. Hope everybody liked this. Please give us a thumbs up if you like what we talk about. And we'll see you here next time, hopefully. Bye now and peace and big love. Keep stacking.